Good morning. We want to welcome any and all who are worshiping with us today who are not members to please fill out the visitor information card. We'd love to have a way to be in communication with you. You can check out our Facebook page and our website for the most up-to-date information and events. Are there any other announcements for this morning? It's not you, actually. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. Are there any other announcements for this morning? Uh, trustee meeting after worship today. Trustee meeting after worship today. Okay. Brett has an announcement for us. I had a couple things to go over. As you know, Pastor D has been suffering from uh, migraines and headaches for a while, and she's seen a new doctor undergoing some new treatment and therapies. Uh, in the next several weeks, it's going to be a little tough on her. So if she is not herself or she's a little bit off, uh, please be understanding. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to say that. <laughs> um, but we're going to try to help out a little bit. Diane's going to do a lot of the prayer announcements. And if need be, we'll see if the liturgists uh, coming up here might be able to do a few more things. But I'll uh, keep it, uh, prayers going for Pastor D and her uh, therapy and treatments for her migraines. And also, SPRC committee will be meeting next Sunday after church. Thank you. Yeah. 
the student citations that they're giving me, and that's why I'm having people that are doing the prayers, because I got to be on my A game for prayers, and I noticed I wasn't. So I'm having people that are coming up here to be on the A game for your prayers. So um, today it's going to be Diane, and next week, I don't know, I don't know who it's going to be, but somebody that can give you your A game for your prayers, and I'm not stumbling over words like that. Um, I will keep you in my private prayers, and please call me for your private prayers during that time. But all this time, we are still a community of Christ. We depend on each other, we lean on each other, we give each other strength, and that is the glory of God. Whether we are here in person or online, we are continuing to pray with each other and lift each other up. Because God is good all the time. All the time, God. The things that I have held dear, the vanities that whispered in my ear, what would I do if they all disappeared? Riches and fame, all that they could buy, I've come to find they never satisfy. What would I gain if my soul's a prize? I don't want to love what the world loves. And I don't want to chase what the world does. I only want you. I only want you. First things first, I seek your will, not my own. Surrender all my wants to you. I keep the first thing first. To live your truth and walk your ways. Set my eyes, Lord, I fix my face on desires reversed to keep the first things first I give it all my life in offering my heart is yours so have your way in me your kingdom's all that I want to seek cause I don't want to love what the world loves I don't want to chase what the world does oh I only want you things first. I seek your will, not my own. Surrender all my wants to you. I keep the first things first. To live your truth and walk your ways. Set my eyes. Lord, I fix my eyes on you. All my desires reversed. To keep the first things first. Nice. Would you please rise if you're able for the opening prayer? Loving Shepherd, you know our names. You care for us. When we face darkness and death, you walk beside us. When we hunger for your love, you are present with us. When we are fearful, you feed us at your table. May we dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of our lives. Amen. Please remain standing for the opening hymn as we gather at your table, number 2268, verse 1 and 2.
be seated. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Good shepherd, we you take, take care your care for granted. granted. In the, in the midst, midst of, of your many blessings, blessings we, we complain of not having enough. enough. In the to presence the presence of danger, of danger we, we fail to trust your abiding love. When you set a table before us, we turn aside from you. Call us back into your care and help us trust your caring presence, that your actions may proclaim your truth. Amen. Please take a moment for silent prayers of confession. Hear these words of assurance. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. God forgives our failures and calls us back into the flock. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. <clears throat> Please join in our response. Lord, listen to your children playing. Praying. 2193. <laughs> around a little bit. Um, the skit guys, um, the wonder of his piece is going to be before my sermon. So now we're going to invite all the children of all ages to come and listen to Marion Collins and her children's time. Yeah, my sheep. This is my shepherd's hook. Oh, cool. Why don't you sit up here? Oh, I like the sheep. This is actually called the Theracane. You're supposed to use it like this to get your muscles. Ah, as seen on TV. Pastor, you probably could use one of these. Anyway, today it's my shepherd's hook. Do you know what it means to be a shepherd? Herd sheep. Herd sheep. That's a good guess. Do you think it would be fun or hard to be a shepherd? Hard. Hard, yeah. Well, being a shepherd wasn't easy <clears throat> in Bible times, that's for sure. Take care of that sheep for me. <laughs> you have a whole flock of sheep. You have hundreds of these guys, a hundred. And when one goes astray, you have to go find it and bring it back to the herd with this thing. Shepherd's hook, or is it called a crook? I'm not sure. Crook usually doesn't mean something good. It's hook. <clears throat> Anyway, when one is, so when, when one goes astray, you have to pull it back. When one is injured, sometimes you have to carry it. You have to sometimes sleep with the flock. You have to lead them to water. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have, so you have to travel with them to the water to find food and water and so forth. If a wolf, you, know, you might have a hired hand. A hired hand is like an employee. And you might have a hired hand who's there, but if a wolf comes, the, the hired hand is maybe not going to, He's going to be scared. He might flee or run away, as they say. So because the hired hand isn't really invested in the sheep, so he's not <laughs> going to stay when there's wolves all around. But the, but the shepherd knows that those are his sheep, those are his flock. He will lay down his life for the sheep. Do you know what that means, lay down his life? Die. Yeah, he might have to die for the sheep, right? The hired hand is just a... Is Like I said, he's going to flee. Think of it this way. I used to not let my kids swim in the neighbor's pool because, unless I was there. Because nobody's going to watch my kids the way I'm going to watch my kids, right? Yeah. Your mom is going to watch you better than I would. Obviously, that's been proven. Um, 
Those, I can hand over the responsibility of somebody else watching my kids, but those people aren't invested in my kids the way that I am. As so, the, the hired hand is not invested in the sheep the way, the way the shepherd is. So, the moral of the story then is, God, Jesus, the Lord, is our shepherd. He, he the Lord cares for us, provides for us, protects us, and leads us like a, the good shepherd that he is, right? If we get lost or go astray, he pulls us back into the herd. He does lead us to water, but water isn't always H2O water. Water could be something that, that, it could be something that nourishes us for our body and our soul, something that we need. So there are plenty of stories in history of other people, humans, laying their lives down for others. It could be the soldier who puts himself in the line of fire and saves a whole platoon of people, right? There's a story about a man who got caught in a, so a snowstorm with his two little children. He built a snow shelter for them, but there was still the door, and the wind was getting in the door. So he put himself in the door and saved his two children, but he did not make it. And then you always hear stories of people throwing themselves into an oncoming vehicle, pushing someone else out of the way, and they themselves are in the path of the vehicle. So those are just stories of people that have laid their lives down for others. Jesus laid his life down for us. We can rejoice that God is our good shepherd. Let's pray. You can put sheepy down. There we go. Dear God, Dear God. thank you for being our good shepherd. Thank you for being our good shepherd. For leading us. For meeting us. For finding us. For finding us. For forgiving us. For forgiving us. Help us to be obedient sheep. Help, Help us be obedient. In our earthly world. In our earthly world. So that we. So that we. May be like shepherds too. May be like shepherds too. Amen. Amen. We please rise for the reading of the scripture. It comes from John 10, 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I... I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to, to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down for my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I received this command from my Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So now we're going to see a video, it's a short video, on Skit Guys, kind of a comedic tape on the Good Shepherd. Now this was made for uh, 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 an Advent series, so at the very end he's going to say something about Christmas, but it is about the Good Shepherd. If your church has been around long enough, they've probably bigger. got one of these hanging on their wall somewhere. It's a painting of a shepherd and a sheep. Well, lots of sheep. Uh, beautiful green pastures, still waters. It's quiet, it's peaceful. It, it's all of that. That's okay. But have you ever tried to steer a sheep? All right, time for dinner. Come back. No, it's okay. You guys, wait. We're friends. Why do you run? Hey, don't get smart out with me, all right? All right, someone's getting the shears. And if I'm to be honest, sheep, they're dumb. I don't know if you've heard. No, they're just not as smart as other animals. No, they're dumb. Like, walk off a cliff just because it's there, dumb. All right, do you want me to take you out to pasture? Because I will take you out to pasture. 
Oh, no, come back. Karen! No, Karen! Over here! Over here! Karen! Goodness gracious, they're just stubborn. Skittish, too. Fearful little things. Oh, don't be like that. Do you want me to get the shepherd's hook? Do you want me to get the shepherd's hook? Hey, hey, I'm the one that feeds you. Hey! Don't ignore me. I think I get kids ministry now. Fine. I love you. You ever wondered why Jesus called us a sheep? Kind of a bitter pill to swallow, huh? But if we were to closely examine our lives, look at all the messes that we make, how fearful we are, how fickle and wayward we can, well, if I can just put it bluntly, how dumb we can be, we are sheep. Yeah, sheep. That's about right. <laughs> But thankfully, God sent us a good shepherd, someone who will be gentle with us when we are far from home, someone who will be firm when he needs to be. Doesn't it say everything that God picked shepherds to send the good news of Jesus' birth? And that right there should remind us of his shepherd in ways right off the bat. That first Christmas, it was a sign of peace with God for all eternity. And our shepherd, he paid the price for that peace, the highest price. I don't know about you, but this Christmas, it means so much to me that I have a good shepherd. So what did we learn? that doing AV is very much like being a shepherd. It doesn't go where you want it to do. You have to kind of move it along gently. You have to shush it. You have to use a shepherd's crook and grab it. Thank you, Claire, for being our good shepherd to get that video. Our hardware or software updated. We have to figure out how to, to get it updated. Pair, Peter and Claire were desperately trying to figure out the update. Oh, I'm glad I don't have to do the AV. I'm just saying that I'm blessed to have people that do that. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you that you are here, and we thank you that you lead us in all things. Bless us as we go about talking about being good shepherds in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. So what does this talk about? This talks about that Jesus is there to be our good shepherd, to lead us as a shepherd does. It's interesting that shepherds in Palestine don't do like they do in the Western world. They don't have four-wheel vehicles where they're running up on their animals and they're scaring them. They don't have dogs where they're running them around. Well, they do have dogs, but they're, it's not like in Australia and it's not like in the U.S. and all that stuff. It's not an antagonistic type of shepherding system. It's more like a leader type of shepherding system. They train the animals from the time they're young to follow a lead sheep. And they follow the lead sheep, and the lead sheep is trained to be connected to the shepherd. And that sheep follows the shepherd that has the staff, or whatever the big pole is. It's not always looking like this. And that shepherd leads instead of being behind the, the flock and shoving. That's how they do it in the Palestinian system. And they lead. And the big sheep leads, and the other sheep follow like sheep, or we would say lemons, and they follow where they go. And occasionally, they have a dog or two that keeps the sheep that kind of get lost in line, and they go where they need to go, 
And when a sheep gets in trouble, that's when the shepherd uses the hook to get somebody out of the way, to move them along. They use the other end of the hook to, boom, get them moving along. But it's a gentler system. It's not such an antagonistic system. Now, there's stories about using the, the end of the hook to get a sheep to really get in line by doing some damage. But think about it. If you were damaging your livelihood, could you really get it to market? So I don't think those stories are as accurate as you think. Also, they would take this and put it like this, and then they would put the littlest ones on top of that because it kind of distributes the weight and it helps you carry. These things, when they're not made of plastic and really bendable, are really helpful to a shepherd. And it's something that we use as a symbol of our bishops. It's a, when we give this to a bishop, it shows that the bishop is there to lead our flock. It's there to keep us in line. It's there to help nudge us along. It's there to show us the way in a loving way. Not to be behind us with a four by four going, move, move, move. It's there to be in front of us, leading the way in the best possible version of Jesus. To show us what we should be as loving, good, beloved Christians. We all hope that our bishops live up to that. So in this scripture, which is one of the most beloved of scriptures of all Christianity, we have Jesus as the good shepherd who looks out for his flock and he says, my flock knows me, my flock loves me, and I will literally lay down my, lock, my life for my flock. When my flock comes in at night, I protect it, which means I will lay my life down. I will lay my body down in front of it. So at nighttime, when the flock would come into a little, like, cave indention, the flock would go in, and the shepherd would lay his body in front of the indention, indent of the, the crock or, or the the cave or the, the wall or whatever it was, so that the sheep would know that they were safe. So it would be the shepherd and the dogs, and then the sheep would be behind them. And they would know, okay, for this night, we can rest. We can relax. We can replenish. Because the guy that takes care of us, the guy that brings us food and leads us to water, is going to be in front of us. And he's not going to like make, let the big bad get to us. So at night, we know we are safe. We know we are taken care of. We know, as human beings, we would say, we know we are loved. And that person is there to take care of us. And what does that mean as a human being? That means that we look up to Jesus and we say, we relax because we say Christ is there and we say we put our life in your hands and we rest a little bit because we know that Christ said, I'm putting my body here so that you know that even if the absolute worst happens, and your mortal life ends. I have literally put my life on the line. And I have made it so if the worst happens and your life ends, I am there. And I've got you. I am there and I've got you. I will be there and I will welcome you and I will catch you and you will be falling into my arms and you're coming home with me, and then you will live again. 
So even if your mortal life ends, you'll be healed and you will be better than you were in your mortal life and I will carry you on. I'm going to be with you through your mortal life. The Holy Spirit's going to be with you through your mortal life. I'm going to be there walking with you through your mortal life. But as a mortal, your life is going to have an end. So I'm going to be with you through all of that. But when that end comes, I'm still going to be with you. So I am that gateway. Nothing is ever going to get to you that I'm not there. Nothing is ever going to harm you that I'm not there. I'm always going to be there with you. I'm always going to be there to protect you. I'm always going to be there at your side. I'm always going to make sure you're okay. Even on what you might think is your worst day, even on the day that you might think the world comes to an end, I'm going to be there to catch you. That's my job. I'm your shepherd. I will make sure that I'm there. That's what he's saying. And he says it not only to those who believe, not only to those that said, I am giving my life to Christ. Not only to those that have been baptized, not only to those that have been confirmed. But he says in this passage that I am for everyone. That's an amazing part of this passage. He says, I am for all tribes. I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. He knows it. He knows there's people out there who have never heard of him, don't know who he is. But he's there for them. He knows that there's people that don't know him, don't love him, don't care about him. He loves them. He knows them. He cares about them because he's Jesus. He's God. He knows who they are. So that person in your life that you are so worried about, that person in your life that you love so much, that turns to you and goes, I don't believe in God. I don't care about God. I don't think Jesus lives. I don't think there is anything. Jesus cares about them. Jesus loves them. God knows about them. God loves them. God is calling to them. Jesus is reaching out to them. Jesus knows they're his sheep. Jesus knows they're his. Jesus' voice is reaching out. Jesus is still sleeping across their bedroom door. At night, when they go to bed, there's Jesus right across their bedroom door. Remember when they were a baby? And there were nights when you were on their floor just desperate for them to go to sleep because they were up every 15 minutes with something. There's Jesus right there. Whatever their pain is, whatever their doubt is, whatever their turmoil is, Jesus is in their life. Whether you're ready to give them up or not, and I'm speaking from my own deepest pain right now. I have a brother I have not seen in 10 years. More. Eric's waving his head, nodding his head. More than 10 years. I lost my brother Kirk to the addiction years ago. Don't know where he is. He could be clean, he could be sober, he could be wonderful. No clue. He also... Last I saw, I had no desire to know who God was at all. But I know that Jesus is calling for him. And I know wherever he is in his life and whatever is happening in his life, even though 
I have no relationship with him, and we have a lot of luggage to unpack. But Jesus is still sleeping and guarding his door. I don't have to have a relationship with him. I don't have to have my issues unpacked to know that my Lord and Savior still loves him. He doesn't have to have a relationship with Christ to know that Christ is still calling to him and still loving him and still caring for him. And God is saying, you are my child because I created you, dude. I made you. You can say I don't exist all you want, but the proof is in the pudding. You exist. Somebody made you. And it was not the universe. You exist. Jesus calls to him. And Christ watches over him. This is what it means to be the good shepherd. The good shepherd doesn't look at a sheep and say, dude, you've got such bad attitude not dealing with you. The good shepherd says, you've got attitude. You're still mine, and I love you. I don't care if the other sheep have turned their back. You are still mine. Jesus loved everyone. Jesus cared for everyone. Jesus says, I don't care where you are in your life. You are mine. And remember that story about the lost sheep? It makes no sense to us, doesn't it? You got 99 sheep that you've got to take care of, and you're dealing with 99 sheep. 99 crazy sheep. And one gets away from you, and you're trying to take care of 99 crazy sheep. One and you leave the 99 to go after the one? That makes no sense. And Jesus says, no, you deal with the one that got away because that one is as important as the 99. I've been to church management courses. They tell you, no, it's not. You stick with that 99, dude. You don't go after the one. Jesus tells you, you go after that one, because that one is hurting, that one is in pain, that one needs you, that one ran for a reason. You go after that one, and Jesus is right. But you have your lay leader to take care of that 99. Listen, my lay leaders, <laughs> you take care of that 99, and then you bring the one back, not to anger, because they had a moment, but to love and rejoicing because they're back. That's how Jesus works. That's how the church works. That's how the body of Christ works. Thank you for coming back. We missed you. Thank you for coming and joining us again. You didn't leave us. You were on vacation. You had a moment. We're glad you're back. Thank you for joining us again because our flock wasn't whole while you were gone. Jesus loves us. We will never know to the extent that love is because we just can't. Jesus sacrificed for us. Jesus adores us in a way that we can't understand fully. But when we're at our worst, we can reach out and grab it. When we're at our best, we can celebrate it. And we're at our normal. We can live into it telling people through our actions and our daily lives that we are a beloved people, loving the fact that we have a God that loves us so much that we can love others. 
no matter what their race, their culture, their ethnicity, whether they believe in God or don't believe in God, because we know that God loves them so much that we see their beauty. We see them shining. We see that they are a beloved creature that God just wants us to hug and bring into the fold. Christ's sheepfold. Amen. Please join in singing hymn number 2146, verses 1 and 2, His Eye is on the Sparrow. It's now time for our joys and our concerns. The first thing I'd like to lift up is that if you feel called to lead a prayer for a Sunday, I would welcome you to volunteer for that. Just let me know and we'll make that happen. Are there any joys or concerns that you want to lift up today? Requests. Well, I have someone here that I'd like you all to meet. Um, this is Mary. <laughs> Mary is, we've called Mary to come and be Charlene's shepherd. Um, as you all know, Hoodie's mom, Charlene, is quite sick with colon cancer and other issues uh, and is on hospice. And we found Mary to come and be Charlene's shepherd. She's living with Charlene. Uh, Mary came, she was born in Fiji, so she's got a lot of beautiful stories to tell us about her beautiful country. Uh, she more recently was living in New Zealand. Wow. So she saw lots of sheep there, didn't she, Mary? <laughs> <laughs> a lot, yes. And then, but she uh, has lived in the United States for just a half a year out in California. But now she's here living in Fairdale, and I hope you'll all help her feel welcome. And please pray for Mary um, and Charlene, of course, too. But it's not easy for a 91-year-old woman to have someone move in with her. <laughs> and... Uh, and when you're feeling sick, too. So Charlene needs our prayers, and Mary needs her prayers as well. God, we welcome Mary to our midst, and we pray that you will surround Charlene and give Mary the strength to help her. We ask that you do this in the 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I had to write it down. I also forgot to say the people on our prayer list um, is we have Mike Roach, Linda Johnson, whose surgery was delayed, and they should be on their way home, I believe. It's not till June. Okay. Andy and Morell um, had some good news this week, I believe. Lori, do you want to give an update on that? Yeah, Peggy uh, sent his mother, sent uh, Linda um, a text that when the doctors got in there and got to the tumor itself, it was 95% dead already. And it was encased in mucus. And all the 11 lymph nodes that they looked at were all negative for cancer. So Andy is ecstatic that yeah, this was his last chance at life. And so um, it looks like the doctor says the precautions, the preliminary, preliminary te uh, treatment that they gave him worked. But we also know it was the prayers that we loaded on that kid <laughs> to bring him through this. Can we all say amen? Amen. You want to give an update on Caitlin, too? <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard um, from Ryan. They said one to two weeks. So within the week, we should know what his thyroid biopsy is. And then Caitlin, um, she needs prayers because she's afraid. She doesn't want to know. And trying to get her to call a doctor um, to make the appointment so he, she can get the rest of the testing she needs. Um, what Last week, what it was is when she got her blood work back on her, the tumor markers, um, the colon cancer was elevated. Normal is 0 to 35, hers is 55. They also had done a CAT scan, and they said there was um, inflammation, swelling um, at the area where the small intestine goes into the colon. So um, that's an area of concern, and she needs to have a colonoscopy. So just prayers that... Um, she will follow through and get the treatment that she's going to need. And you said Ryan is waiting for his results? Too? Ryan is waiting on his results, yes. And he's going to be 50 on Friday. Happy birthday, Ryan. Which is impossible because I'm 20. <laughs> <laughs> God, we ask that you surround Ryan. We know how difficult it is to wait for test results and to just not know. We ask that you surround his family and give them the strength to, to listen for you and take comfort from those around them. We also lift, lift up to you, Caitlin. We know that this young lady is strong-willed and independent, and it's hard to realize that maybe we need to slow down and take a minute and figure out what's going on. We ask that you surround her with wisdom and caring the, and wrap your arms around her so that she knows your love. We pray all of this, God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Um, we have an update on Donna at all. Donna's doing well. We just continued strengthening and healing for her. And Jack's surgery is coming up May two weeks from tomorrow, long anticipated surgery for Jack for his neck. Uh, God, we ask that you continue to wrap your arms around Donna and give her healing and strength and continue to have her make daily improvements with her therapy. We ask that you surround Jack and calm his heart as he nears his surgery date. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Are there any other announcements for this morning? Our announcements. Sorry, that's my go-to. <laughs> Is there any other prayers for this morning? All right, let us pray. God, you have heard our prayers that we lifted aloud, and you know the prayers that we have in our hearts. We ask that you continue to strengthen this congregation, strengthen Pastor D, wrap your arms around her, let her know that we're here for her to help her and to just um, provide assistance as well as our own prayers for her. We ask that you continue to strengthen her, lead her doctors in providing care for her and finding the right treatment plan. We ask that you bless this congregation, help us to reach out into our community and our world, and that we can show the world the love of Jesus Christ and welcome back those that we love as well as find those that we need to find into the world to bring into our flock. We ask this in the words that your son taught us, saying, 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We'll now have our mission moment with Lori. Okay, um, our missions for this month are Hope Haven, which is the homeless shelter in DeKalb. And um, I imagine they've been busy uh, through the winter, but it's the time of year when it's getting warm. People think that they can be outside. It's nice to, you know, be around, but the evenings are very cold. So I'm sure they're still assisting uh, others and uh, that are homeless and in need of help, unable to, you know, provide for their, there's families that can't provide for their children. So we just need to support them. And I know they really appreciate um, any giving that we are able to uh, supply for them. And the other is Sager Brown, which is um, Sager... <laughs> Sager Brown is a, a part of um, UMCOR. They're located in Louisiana, and they, um, it's a, the hub of UMCOR's relief supply operation. And each year, more than 2,000 volunteers prepare $5 million in supplies for shipments from the Baldwin, Louisiana uh, facility. They also have local outreach where they build ramps um, and um, uh, help the elderly in the communities. Um, they also have a food pantry, um, addiction counseling. So they're really um, in, in the community and helping others as well as worldwide. So uh, we ask for your consideration and a donation to Sager Brown as well. And in the back, we had a wonderful tea. The library hosted a tea yesterday, and there were, I don't know, at least 70 people there. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, it was wonderful. Lutheran Church uh, had it um, in their community room, and it was very spacious. Um, and we just had a great time. The food was wonderful. And um, I have brought you guys leftovers today, the macarons. Ooh. Now, mostly... Everybody knows about a macaroon, but and I don't really know the difference except the, the macaron is very little, <laughs> and they're very colorful. So um, those are on the back table if you're uh, wanting to try a macaron. And uh, thank you. Thank you. I love the glasses. You like it? I, I'm do. being very, I'm very cool right now. <laughs> Would the ushers please step forward for the morning's offering? Your compassion. 
expression in your eyes Savior's voice says to me Time to come back home, my child So I came running and running and running You kept reaching and reaching and reaching Load a million miles of my mistakes Still couldn't keep your love away However far away I am from home That's how far you love me Gracious and loving God, we thank you for all that you have given us, and we return a portion back to you, asking you to bless it and use it to grow your kingdom in this congregation and in this community, using it to grow your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please remain standing for our closing hymn, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. are too cool for school. <laughs> As you go this week, remember that you have the Good Shepherd taking your hand, being with you, leading you, and protecting you in all ways. Reflect that in all that you do. Go forth in the name of the, the Good Shepherd, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>